Hey, I am back with another Q&A. Well, it's actually um, addressing a previous Q&A. So it's going a little further. I wanted to share this Q&A because um, I feel like it will help uh, an another lady who maybe uh, experienced the same thing. So um, this goes back to um, the message by ASM. So this was a recent one. Um, so she's basically saying that when she was 27, she's had these attempts, right? Trying to do uh, NBE, natural breast enhancement. So um, now she's uh, saying, well, I tried massaging and uh, with increasing prolactin, right? So the prolactin hormone again, which is like a deception. <laughs> you do not want to try to grow your breasts by upping your prolactin. I don't care who told you what. It's not, that is not the hormone. Prolactin as actually, uh, is actually unhealthy if it's too high. It's okay to have a little bit of prolactin because you need a little bit of prolactin, but you don't want to increase it over your other hormones because that is actually doing the opposite of what you're trying to achieve. What are you trying to achieve? Developing glands that store fat, not developing glands that store milk, okay? It's easier to store milk for some ladies than fat because they have maybe a little more testosterone um, rather than progesterone. So this is why some of you ladies have flabby boobs or your boobs turn flabby because your hormones are out of whack. <laughs> so um, if you just tried noogling alone increasing your prolactin, of course you're not getting any results. So this makes a lot of sense. You are increasing your prolactin and you are dumbing down your progesterone or not allowing your progesterone to create the development of glands that are needed to store your fat. So I've tried so many herbal pills, ready-made ones that claim to grow your bust. Can I ask you where you get your bovine ovaries from? So um, in another video, um, I did address where. Okay, so in the past I've used Medplex, which is no longer. Um, I use, um, now I am using Dr. Ron's formula. So go ahead <laughs> and research Dr. Ron, uh, Dr. Ron's formula. He's um, organically sourced, very passionate about uh, give, uh, creating products uh, supplements for for people who need them so he's a believer in uh, glandulars and organs as well as you know other things um, dr. Ron's formula and bountiful breasts if I can get my hands on some bountiful breasts I will be using that and I'll let you ladies know like what I'm using but they, uh, both of these are very, very good, and they are expensive. They're not cheap. So this is what I use. Um, can you use any, uh, others? Of Absolutely. Use what you can get your hands on as long as, you know, they go through the quality assurance. They're um, being tested for harmful things, like most supplements. You have to go through the GMP or whatever you know, the certification is, um, you'll, you'll be fine. Uh, so it says, uh, I'm still too scared. I read a lots of bloating on your forum and I'm currently treating my chronic bloating and acupuncture. So I don't want to ruin when I progressed at all. Did you research your ovary growth, consult a doctor about it, test how it grew? I have to think this thoroughly before taking the big step. I hope you can be patient with me. Um, Sure, I understand that. I mean, that's, you know, a lot of ladies go through bloating because they might be intolerant to something, and it's probably not really um, bovine ovarian related, because then that's just like saying, well, geez, you know, my ovaries cause me bloating. But really, it could just be um, 
an intolerance to a supplement that they're taking because not everyone experiences bloating with um, certain herbs or glands that they're taking, organs that they're taking. In this case, you know, <laughs> doing a little more research, the ovary is uh, a gland and an organ <laughs> because it produces hormone, it's technically a gland, but then it's like an organ, you know, at the same time. So it's it's both in, in a lot of people's um, literature it's considered both so um yeah i mean it's rich in iodine and hormones i mean you might be sensitive to estrogen but i mean honestly i think the birth control pill causes a lot more bloating uh and foods that you are eating that cause the bloating the intolerances you may not have an allergy but you probably have an intolerance to something that you're not really good with so um yeah it's very possible that you can actually do, um, have an intolerance to um, estrogen or progesterone spikes a lot of women are very sensitive to hormone fluxes i know i get sensitive to hormone fluxes and um I'm not sure if it's because of my Hashimoto's or what, but um, yeah, I've been through it. Whether I've been on BO or not, I've been through the the reactions of bloating. Um, generally, I think it's too high estrogen and not enough progesterone. And then I've had too much progesterone or too high hormones, and um, I experience a lots of uh, urinating and... Um, you know, I think it probably has something to do with the adrenals. But yeah, I pee a lot. It's so weird. I think with um, estrogen, you retain water. You hold your pee, your urine, your, your electrolytes, your water or whatever, your liquids. And then when you have uh, a little too high progesterone, you might have the um, constipation. Uh, you might have uh, lots of urination and not holding on to your liquids. Um, it's normal. You know, I think a lot of women who are pregnant go through these same fluxes and, and a lot of them are very sensitive to the hormones so um yeah chronic bloating i don't know what yours is caused from if you have low low hormones across the board low to nor normal and you're already having bloating then it's it's probably something else i wouldn't imagine that the ovarian supplements would make it worse because i think that you yeah, you've got something else going on. Your body could be attacking itself um, from something that's been it's been exposed to in the past, or maybe something you're currently uh, being exposed to. Um, I haven't talked to a doctor, and I have thought about it. And I think if I can get some sort of an ultrasound in the future, I will. Once I ad address my um, my current state of health. I think that's my next step is finding out, okay, did they really, really grow? Um, let's find out. Okay, so you did mention, okay, I've overlooked the most important thing uh, regarding growing. Uh, consulting a doctor, did all my hormone tests, the sh it, it, tests have shown that I've low everything normal, but on the low to normal side, nothing dominant. Uh, so she suggested I take estrogen and progesterone to grow. And I did that for a year and nothing. And it was probably because you had high prolactin higher prolactin or perhaps your body was just I don't know it depends I mean I hope it was not conjugated estrogens from like a horse such as um, Promarin or some sort of like uh, converted hormones from yeah some other animal that are not really compatible with us I'm hoping they give you bioidentical hormones and maybe um, you just didn't get the right ratio. Maybe you just, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for a year, nothing happened. You were taking supplemental progesterone and supplemental estrogen. Maybe you need to um, take your, you know, FSH and luteinizing hormone test to find out if you... Um, have um any luteinizing hormone like if you actually have progesterone like you're making your own progesterone because supplemental is good to kind of kick start things but not to rely on um and then have your body recognize that hormone and then actually start kick off the growing process it's just a good little kicker when you already have your own progesterone 
Um, but yeah, maybe you're not making enough of your own progesterone. And uh, if you're not rotating it, the cream or the, um, the topical, I don't know if you were taking it internally, but um, if, you were ta if it was just like a topical that she had you put on, um, maybe you weren't rotating the areas enough because once they fill up, as in the receptors take in the hormone, and you keep putting it in that same spot, it's there, your receptors are going to shut down. That is in uh, documented uh, medical journals, literature, that you're going to shut your receptors off. So you're not going to take the hormone in, and it's not going to do anything for your body. You're just going to load up that tissue in that area, and your receptors are like, uh-uh, no more. And it causes insensitivity. So if you weren't doing that, I could see, okay, maybe that was the reason. It was just too much of the same thing in the same spot, and it just was not sensitive enough to it anymore. So, yeah, I want to say these things work for maybe a few months. Topicals. Now, if you're taking internal, maybe you were taking the wrong kind of estrogen. Maybe she gave you a strid oil, and she and you actually needed estrone or um, estriol. You know, it could because there's three different types of estrogens and. Who knows, maybe there's more that we just don't know about that your body really needs and it just is lacking. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah, I'd say after three months, if it's not working, it's definitely not going to help you out. That's why a lot of trans people don't really have um, that much success with hormones. All you can really do is just um, kill your testosterone and then hopefully convert that DHT over into um, est real estrogen your body recognizes. So yeah, um, maybe that's what happened. It just was not the right kind that your body needed. Um, starting from scratch and you don't have developed tissue. Never breastfed or had kids. Uh, you probably have a lack of circulation. That's what I would think. If you maybe you have low temps, you might have a lack of circulation. I have low temps, lack of circulation. Everything was bottom heavy for me as well, and um, I really had to boost up my uh, circulation up here, and the pumping was what did it. But if my prolactin was up, it wasn't going to happen. I had no growth. So I had to get my progesterone up. I had to start making my own progesterone. And that's what I think we need to start having you do is um, increasing your progesterone. So I think maybe Vitex would help you out. Since you have no tissue, developed tissue at all, you're going to need to um, take the Vitex and then you're going to wait. And then you're going to probably want to start pumping and then add some BO. That's what I would look into doing. And I do have that guide so it will help you to kind of time everything. And that testing your FSH and your LH would probably be where I would actually just start. Since we know you're low hormones. So yeah, I, that's what I would do. So I'll be hearing from you again, I'm sure. And um, hopefully that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. You're still young enough and I think you can do it. So, alright, well, I'll probably hear from you soon, like I said. So, okay. Later, later.